All right. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's so much fun to be with you guys. You guys are very different, so very unique, and and uh, different, and unique is good. Uh, but uh, I want to get into this because I know there's dinner planned. Um, I want to jump right into this if we can. Um, Luke chapter five this morning, fifth chapter of Luke. How many get your mail at the house? You get your mail at the house. You got a mailbox out front. You have a mailbox maybe at the mail at the post office. But what do you do when you open that when you open that lid and you reach in and grab your mail before you close that lid? What do you do? What do you normally do? You take a second look and you make sure that the mail box is empty. So let's make sure that the box is empty this morning, okay? Don't send me down the road with something I'm still carrying. Come on, y'all. Luke chapter 5. I want to preach for a few minutes on something that I like to entitle, God does his best work at night. God does his best work at night. And I encourage you, oh, Father God. Uh, I, just, I just feel an overwhelming move of the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for miracles this morning. We thank you for moving with signs and wonders. Minister to your people today by your presence, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. You have a back problem, a lower back problem. Quickly stand up. Father, I ask that your anointing would begin to move through people's bodies. Father, I thank you for signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, I speak over Charles' body from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And the Spirit of the Lord would say this to you, Charles, after this morning, anxiety will not be able to rule you. Okay, heaven's intervening today. Father, we thank you for ministering with signs and wonders. Oh, come on, this just, there's just such a sweet, sweet anointing. You can get your miracle yourself, folks. The presence of the Lord is here to minister to you. So I ask for every disc, every vertebrae in Jesus' mighty name. If it's deteriorating in any way, I command it to stop. I speak the morrow of the word to our bones. Lord God, for a complete... There's even a lower... Uh, uh, a, there's been some damage to a lower tailbone, and it's on the left side that's being healed right now. Now, I, I know doctors can't fix that kind of stuff, but God can. So I'm asking, Father, in the... There it went right there. There it went right there. Ooh, my. Jesus, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. You see, I, I, I don't know where we're going to go right now. I, don't, I just, I, I really don't. Middle of praise and worship, my body cup caught up with where my spirit was traveling. The world calls it deja vu. But it's just uh, God sending me in my spirit places before I get there physically, preparing me to operate in obedience to the environment. So, Father, I'm asking you in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, for guidance right now. Hallelujah. Everybody in this room that needs a miracle in your body, a, a healing or a miracle in your body, stand up, please. Just stand up. Father, let the presence of the Holy Ghost move with signs and wonders. Lord, this is an hour where all the honor and all the glory and all the attention is on you. Father, we just honor you for presence evangelism right now. I feel lungs getting cleared up right now. Glory to God. I speak to any kind of asthma conditions in Jesus' name. I speak to any kind of damage that's been done to lungs because of smoking or anything of that sort. I speak supernatural recovery right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. The Lord said kidneys are being healed right now. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, whatever we have done to our bodies over the time that we've been in them that has brought detriment to our bodies, we ask right now that everything that is in need would be supernaturally met by your presence and by your power. We give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it. We give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it. We give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it. We give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it. We give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it. We give you the honor and the praise. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get you to, to worship him right now. I'm trying to get you to cry out to him right now. I'm trying to get you to praise him a little bit right now. We give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God Almighty. Father, from this arena right now, from this meeting place with you right now, we are asking for a great move of your spirit in our immediate families in Jesus' mighty name. We ask for supernatural intervention on the behalf of every one of our righteous seed right now in Jesus' mighty name. We declare miracles in their families wherever they're at. There's neither time nor place in the spirit. And we thank you for supernaturally awakening, supernaturally bringing sobriety to, to, to relationships and to children and to grandchildren. This is our covenant right. This is our covenant authority. In the name of Jesus, we bind the devil and break any kind of power, any kind of influence, any kind of snare, any kind of tie, in any kind of way. And we declare liberty today in Jesus' mighty name. We declare freedom today in Jesus' mighty name. We declare salvation today in Jesus' mighty name name. Let all of our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren serve the Lord for as we in our own house will serve God in Jesus' mighty name. And there's not anything that the devil can do about it. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Where's that microphone? Listen, listen, listen. Listen. Brother, be obedient to God. Let that tongue go. Let that tongue go. I just heard the Holy Ghost say, call him up here and have him prophesy. You. Me. <laughs> You can have what you believe for. That's what I've been here. You can have what you believe for. Listen, the, the Lord has set the canopy in the atmosphere for you to tap into what he's already given you. And you can have what you believe for. The problem is your belief has got to change into his dimension. It's got to change into what he says it is. And when you come into alignment with that, God will give you what you believe for. But the, the, he's changing your belief system right now. He's changing that he's a good God. We don't believe that he's that good because we can't. We don't believe that he wants to heal us, that he wants to walk with us, that he wants to 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 put us in a position of great authority. He, we, ha, ha, what are you believing for, Jesus? What are you believing for? What are you believing for? Change your belief. Twist it. Twist it. Twist it. Listen, God is setting the things in order, but He's setting us in order first. And I'm telling you. What are you believing for you can have? Our expectation is our manifestation. Amen? Amen. Glory to God Almighty. Now, how many feel different in your body? Come on, wave, wave. If you feel different, the pain's gone. Just wave. Shoulders. Aren't you glad that we don't have to draw everybody up, lay hands on people and... And, and think that there's some kind of great man or great woman in the building, you know, uh, because he's in the building. Amen. I'm telling you, friends, this is what's happening. There is we're going to see this stronger and stronger and stronger as the days go on. God is healing his people in praise and worship, and it's setting the atmosphere for the miraculous. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the lame will walk. God's not changed. The church has changed. God has not changed. Amen. All right. Um, I'm just, uh, I sit down if you'd like. I'm going to just quickly uh, move through this. 
Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to do my very best. Can I have you out in 30 minutes? No. <laughs> food. There's food over there. Right? I'm, I'm really curious about those goat meatballs. <laughs> I hope that that is not the case. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know, uh, I'm going to just read through Matthew or uh, Matthew, Luke chapter five, verse one. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that they stood by the lake of Jacinaret. Every verse in this scripture, this path that we're, we're taking is loaded with revelation. I just don't have time uh, to, to, to capitalize on it, but I will tell you, we're in the time where the famine of the word is over. You see, you might say, well, what are you talking about? You know, um, uh, we've got internet and we've got conventions and we've got all these things. Listen, they, people might be preaching, but they're, they're not preaching the word. There's a lot of preaching going on right now, but they're not preaching the word. Are you listening? And I believe with all my heart that there is a dynamic of revelation that is coming. And really, it's not coming anymore. It's really on us. And it's going to be a dynamic that's going to open hearts and ears and minds to a revelatory approach of a greater understanding of the kingdom. So there's going to come a time where people are going to press in here to hear the word. Okay? And they saw two boats standing by the lake. Two is the number that it means to either come into agreement with or be divided by. And they were standing by, these boats were standing, they were idle. This is, this is the, 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 the condition of a lot of churches in America. In a lot, of, a lot of situations, there are churches that are at a standstill. And this standstill is either going to divide or it's going to push them to be united with God. I watch a lot of ministries chase all kinds of ideas when all they have to do is get into their prayer closet and find out what God wants. I mean, I know churches that have, that have put in thirty and $40,000 lighting systems and never utilized them because the people didn't like it, but they did it because Bethel and all these other places were doing stuff. Okay? Listen, find out what God wants. How hard is that? I was talking to this apostle and I said, well, what's the Lord telling you? No, you know, what's funny to me is, is nobody asked the prophets what God is saying at the first of the year. And you know, what's interesting to me. You'll never hear an apostle or a prophet say, I don't need a pastor. But you'll hear a lot of pastors say, I don't need an apostle or a prophet. Are you hearing me? I want to encourage you. <laughs> Oh, God, I just got so much, I just want to blow up on you guys. But I'm, I'm listen, uh, this apostle says to me, he says, well, we're going to try this, and if that doesn't work, we'll try that. I thought, well, good luck with that. I wanted to do a Dr. Phil on him. Well, how's that working for you? Because it's not. Hello? All right, the Bible says, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Everybody shout, they were done. There's a lot of people that feel like they are done. Like, you know, where, where do we go from here? It just, everything feels numb. And the Bible says this, Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. This is Jesus' first introduction to Peter. And I, and I like this because uh, Jesus wasn't asking Peter's permission. Hello? <laughs> you know, this is Charles's first introduction to Identity Church. And Jesus didn't ask his permission whether or not he could heal him this morning. Right? Watch. So the Bible says this. And he put out a little from the land. He asked Peter to put out a little from the land. You know, when you feel a little bit of a void in your walk with God, can I tell you what's going on? You've become too familiar with him. And he knows that he has to distance himself just a little bit to get you to chase him in a fresh way. Are you hearing me? And a lot of times people don't understand this. Well, where is God? Well, how come we can't find him like we used to? You see, these, these professional fishermen were not used to coming home with nothing. But it, nothing was there for a reason. There, the activity, no activity in the church world right now is there for a reason. It's not to, to divide us, to separate us from God. It's to build a void so the hungry in heart will chase God and find out what God wants in the now. 
Because what worked last year won't work this year. What worked in the last generation won't work in this generation. I talk about a sound, and if you are around a sound that's 10 years old, you're, you're, you're outdated. If you're around a sound that's 20 or 30 years old, you're really outdated. And you look at the sound, you look at the age of the people that, 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 that respond to that sound. They, that sound was there for a reason. It was to get the attention of the generation that it was sent for. God is releasing a different sound right now. So I'm, I'm expecting to bear a whole different kind of fruit. And I'm telling you, there's something to our walk with him that we haven't really utilized. And I pray that we would, we would capture that this morning. Okay? So the Bible goes on to say this. He said, I want you to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and they taught the, the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. I talked a little bit about it last night. When you get around somebody that might know something about what you do for a living a little bit more than you do, one of two things happen. You either put up a wall of defense or you recognize that you are in the presence of something that is going to, you know, uh, you can capitalize on and, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause your life to be more fruitful. Well, now, we dealt with some things last night. We got some things out of the way so that when we get into these learning curves, we handle ourselves correctly, right? But I want you to understand that what this man was used to catching, he's no longer catching. And this is the problem with the church. It's not that the harvest is not out there. It's just we're not doing what God wants us to do the way he wants us to do it, when he wants, to do, wants us to do it, and because we're expecting yesterday to still be available for today and it's not working there's a whole different introduction that god's trying to bring to us everybody shout i'm ready to see him, to see him. listen i my, my 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 slogan or my my title for these meetings is it's time for you to see what the prophets have been hearing and i'm telling you it's time for you to see i'm going to do my very best to help you take another step when I leave, you can begin to operate in some of these things on your own. You have to remember that with God, when the sun goes down, when it seems like it's the darkest time of time, the Jews believe, because it was this way from the very beginning, they believe that it was the beginning of a new day. So I want to encourage you that your next darkest moment is the beginning of a new day. Okay, and if you are in a dark season right now, I want to flag you down and let you know that you're about ready to experience your greatest moment in God. <laughs> no, I mean, there's a whole room full of them. Man. I, feel, I feel like I could grow hair right now. <laughs> Glory to God. You see, when others are falling asleep, you're waking up. Oh, amen. And just because you're asleep doesn't mean that life stops. How many realize that when you go to bed at night, your money keeps working for you? When you go to bed at night, your body rejuvenates itself. Are you listening? And when you go to bed at night, your spirit, man, when you are most dead to this world, you're probably more alive to God. And you need to understand that kind of communion. Now, I'm not talking about a dream that you had after you ate a late night meal. All right, I, I, I'm, you know, people come to me and say, Prophet, Prophet, can you interpret this? You know, we busted through this, this uh, chimney and, and we dropped down and then we busted out the back wall and we traveled uh, through that wall and we ended up underneath the sink next to the comet. And, and, and you know, and then we, what do you think that is? Um, you've got an overblown imagination. <laughs> Hello? But let me just encourage you. When you're having a God dream, it's God dreaming about you and sharing it with you. Are you hearing me? And when you have a God dream, you can't shake that. I had a God dream just the other night. I was prophesying to Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And when I got through prophesying, Gloria spun like a top and hit the floor. I left the room and I ran into Billy Brim. And the word of the Lord came to me for Billy Brim. I don't know what that means. OK, but I got a feeling that God wants me to continue to prophesy, because I'll be honest with you, when you do your very best to prophesy, when you do your very best to bring revelatory information to the body of Christ and people just look at you and go, eh, it can be a little disheartening. 
And the last thing that you want to be around is a wounded prophet. Because it won't go well for you when they open their mouth. You know, the goat's milk will dry up and the camels will die and the cattle will die in the field and this will happen and that will happen. This is why God told Ezekiel in chapter third, at chapter 3, he said, I don't want you prophesying when you're mad. But let me encourage you, when you are asleep at night, can I exhort you to have a, a dream journal by your bed? Because there is a whole 12-hour communion that you need to start paying attention to. In fact, if we will start paying attention to our, our dream life, I got a feeling that it's it, that, that really that, that dynamic, when it begins to wake up and actually become just as real as our fellowship through the course of the day, will institute a double portion. In fact, God just said this to me. He said, son, tell them it will speed up my manifestation." So I learned this years ago in my walk with God. I, I was just being, you know, discipled. I was just starting to come into the kingdom. I didn't, know, I didn't know what happened to me the night I got saved because I left the church service bilingual. <laughs> I didn't know what happened to me. I, I'm talking in a language that I didn't understand. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't Spanish. It wasn't French. Hello? It was that shakalabosata stuff. Amen? And I'm freaking out, man. I mean, I, I didn't know what happened to me. I didn't know anything about the gifts of the Spirit. I was unchurched. I had hair when I got saved. I mean, I looked like Gene Simmons, man. And I, 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 didn't, I didn't know what happened to me. I didn't know anything about the gifts. I didn't know anything about angels. I didn't know anything about covenants. I didn't know anything about revelatory, the, the revelatory approach to the Word. I knew nothing. And I'm dreaming. And in my dream, I'm listening. I didn't even know it was the Holy Ghost. I had to learn that it was the Holy Ghost. I'm dreaming that the Holy Ghost was doing a line by line, verse by verse study with my spirit while I slept. And I said, God, I said, is, is this LSD coming out of my system? I ain't lying. I was freaking out, man. I'm hearing voices on the inside. I, I thought I was, you know, schizophrenic. And I, I, this is how green and naive I was. And then I had nobody to help me. I would go to my pastor and I, I was feeling an unction to preach and I didn't even know it was an unction to preach. I just had a burden to share the word. And my pastor said, I don't have time to spend with you. So I, I've, been, I've been confined to my prayer closet from the very beginning. I was discipled by intercessors. And I'm not talking about people that wear tin hats and act like they live, they live on the moon. You know what I mean? I, but I, I, I grew up in my prayer closet. So I, I grew up around the gifts of the Spirit in my prayer closet before I could live the course of my day. So I lived in the dynamic of expectation concerning Kairos. Oh, folks, I'm just, I hope this doesn't freak you out, but the angelic just showed up. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. There's such destiny in, this, in the lives of your people. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, God. We worship you. You're so awesome. I began to study. And I just didn't understand what was going on. And God was giving me angelic visitation. And, and I just have grown. I've grown in my walk with God, being more sensitive to the Spirit than life. And I have such a passion to see people living in the substance of the manifestation of the kingdom. And sometimes my wife will tell us, my wife, she'll tell you, she, she says to me, it's just, he's just out there. You know, and I can't, I can't figure out why people don't understand what I'm so passionate to understand. I found out that Psalms 121 and verse 4, that God doesn't sleep nor does he slumber. And I began to realize I could have him at 3 in the morning. Like I had him at 3 in the afternoon. Job 35 and 10 says that he gives us songs in the night. 
Psalms 19 verse 2 says that the night will reveal knowledge. Psalms 119 verse 148 says he'll take away in the night the fellow, I will take away in the night and fellowship with you. Isaiah 26 and 9 said, I desire you. The prophet said, I desire you at night, God. And I would wake up from a dead sleep, the Lord screaming scriptures at me. Wake up, just wake up at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. My wife, a lot of times she didn't find me in bed. She knows I'm at my office. I'm either walking the floor praying in the Holy Ghost or I'm at my office studying. And it's just God screaming scriptures at me and bringing me into enlightenment. You know, not what the church wants to hear, but what the church needs to hear. So I just, I love this, this walk that we have with God. It's not, it's, listen, to be spiritual is not spooky. I, I prophesy, when I'm prophesying to a sinner and they don't even know God, I don't have to dress it up with thee and thou artist. You know, I don't prophesy in King James to sinners. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I remember I was ministering to a, a young man one time, and I didn't even know who he was, and the, and the prophecy came out in rap. <laughs> Come to find out the guy was a youth pastor. The Lord is a trip, I'm telling you. I, I've never known a boring day serving God. I'm telling you. You see, there's a whole side to life that most people don't pay attention to. It's your dream life. And when you're at most dead, you're most dead to this world, you're most alive to the kingdom, and this fellowship can speed up the manifestations of God. When we see the manifestation of a movement, this is what I want you to catch. It was God moving before you could see the outcome of the movement. And now it's time to see the process before you see the finished product. Are you hearing me? Are you listening? Did you just hear what I said? I'm saying that before you could see the outcome of a movement, God has got plans on showing you the process so that you can stay encouraged. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever just been wondering what God's up to? You know, how come, you know, I, I, you, you spoke this to me and now all of a sudden I feel like you went on vacation? I'm telling you, there was a fellowship, there was a communion that God is trying to bring the church into that I believe is very productive. What we haven't been able to capture in the day, I believe that we'll seize it in the night. You know, the U.S. military, our, 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 our military has got a slogan, and that slogan is this, we own the night. Would anybody like to know why? Because we have such technology, it's irrelevant. We can be pinpoint whether it's pitch dark or broad day. And I'm telling you, uh, listen, you better listen to me. You got to remember that God created two great lights. The first one was the sun. And the second one is sun rules by day. And the second one was the moon. And the moon is a reflection of the sun. And the scripture says the moon provides light so that it can rule by night. If you and I are a, are, are a reflection of the sun, then we rule at night. Are you listening? I don't know about you, but I like that. <laughs> Glory to God. Psalms 139 verses 11 and 12 says this. Surely the darkness shall fall upon me. Even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. So to God, nighttime is just like daytime. And, I, and to the church, because we are alive to him. How many realize that, you know, you don't have to shut off at night. You can be alive to him through the course of your night's sleep and, the, and your, your sleep time or even dark hours when you feel like you're in the valley and instead of being on the mountaintop, I want to encourage you. They can be just like the day at night. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 16 well, I'm just going to back up to chapter 1 and verse 12. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So I'm just, I am just—I know that people don't understand this when I say it, but it's still the truth. The Holy Ghost was moving before God spoke. 
So I'm going to suggest to you that the move of God is more important than the spoken word. I am not diminishing the power of the spoken word. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying most people come to church. In fact, in America today, people come as late as they can so that they don't have to worship and just hear the message. They're missing the most important part of the service. Are you listening? Because really, to be honest with you, if you have anybody in the pulpit that is spending any time with God, if that person is not prepared to meet with God in such a way that the minister is met with God, then how can there be an equality on a playing field there? You're going to be looking at it like, I, I don't understand a word you're saying. Well, it's because you're not spending any time with God. Oh, come on, y'all. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. The scripture says this. The scripture says that God's given Adam a, a task, and that is to name all the animals that God created. Now, all the animals that God created could see just as well at night as they could during the day. You and I are the only ones that can't. And there's a reason for it. And that is because you and I are to be dependent, trustworthy on God. Trusting God. Are you, are you with me here? Okay. But I want to encourage you. You know, you can, you can get a racetrack and, or, or a racehorse and put them on a racetrack and release them uh, to, to come out of that gate. And that racehorse can be running wide open on the same type of clock that they would be clocked on through the day. And they, they have the ability to run just as fast at night as they do during the day. You and I are the ones that can't see at night. But what God created can. Are you hearing me? And I'm telling you that God's given us a different dimension to be able to see in while we are asleep. And I got a feeling there's some racehorses in the room. Well, I just tried to compliment some of you and you didn't take it. And you know what happened? The Bible says this. The Bible says that Adam, after he got done doing what he did, he couldn't find anybody uh, or anything that was as equal, like an equality to him. So God put a deep sleep on Adam and then he pulled out of Adam. What did he pull out of Adam? He pulled out of Adam a bone, a rib. Bones are symbolic to promises scripturally. And I want to tell you this morning that when you find yourself at your deepest, darkest moment, that's when God will pull out of you something that already exists in you, a promise that you've never seen before in a way that you've never seen it. God will pull it out of you. Listen, let me encourage you. I must be doing all right, at least with this guy. <laughs> Let me exhort you. You got to remember that, that like Elisha's bones, Elisha was the protege of Elijah, and Elijah moved in seven notable miracles. And, and, and the prophet said to his protege, he said, you're going to walk in a double portion. But we find Elisha dying at his, after his 13th miracle. But you got to remember that if God said it, it's going to happen. So one day, somebody was killed in battle, and they uncovered a grave, and they threw his corpse in on a set of bones, and it happened to be Elisha's bones. And number 14 manifested, and Elisha was not even there. Now, God give us some people that understand the strategy of that kind of maturity, that you can sow a life of such obedience to God that you put in the pathway for other generations to experience resurrection power. I got a feeling that's the whole reason why revelation is our inheritance. That's for you and I to discover it and begin to marinate it, but it's really stored up for the up and coming generation to be influenced by it. Are you listening? Jesus, the Bible says this is, they, they, they like what I say, so they give money and they throw it in the basket just to let you know what's going on. They're sowing into what I'm saying. Jesus, listen, not one bone was broken while Jesus was on the cross. Not one promise was broken while Jesus was on the cross. In fact, it was Jesus' willingness to go to the cross and no bone be broken that he would be resurrected on the third day and announce to the body of Christ that every blessing that I've got for you is it's not a broken, you know, just it's, it's not a it's not a conditional thing. It's not. A, it's just there for the taking. So. Genesis. 15 verse 12 talks about Abraham. Abraham taking a journey. 
And this journey, he's a moon worshiper, so he's a man that is accustomed to the night. And he's chasing God. God's taking him out of his, his comfort zone. He's taking him away from his familiarities. And he's asking him just to follow him. And I'm sure that Abraham probably was not aware of what was going to happen uh, before it happened. But we know that even in this journey, he had to be separated from family. And I, that's one thing I've learned. I've learned that sometimes you'll have to be strong enough to be separated from whomever you have to be separated from so that, you, so that God can get accomplished in you. Because it might be God needing a pilgrim, a sojourner, a, a, a person that is looking for their author and their maker. You know, somebody that's established in the kingdom to be able to, you know, establish you in such a way that those, those people that didn't understand your actions can maybe one day wake up and say, you know what, I might want to consider this. Right? We know what happened. We know that in Acts chapter 16, verse 9, Man, I must be doing really good today. Because I haven't seen this kind of action since I've been here. <laughs> Acts 16 and verse 9, Paul is having a night vision. I call it a night vision because he calls it a night vision. Old men dream dreams, so I'm just going to call it night visions. I'm not in my dream stage yet is what I'm trying to say. Okay, And I'm sure that he didn't experience the opposition that he would face in Macedonia. But let me encourage you. This whole reason why God will encourage you in the day and he will encourage you at night is because of the opposition. He said, an effectual fervent door has been opened to me, but there are many hindrances. Hindrances are demonic spirits on the face of the earth. Are you listening? So you run into when you run into some hindrances, recognize what it is, and you have authority over it before it even begins to make suggestions to you. Amen. Go through that effectual fervent door. Be obedient to God. Amen. But normally, if this life's journey is really a journey of destiny, you're going to have to go it alone. You would wish that people could hear the banging of a nail and the sawing of a saw in your temple but they can't hear the construction of God in you. Now, if Susie brings an offering up here, I know I've done well. If she throws a piece of candy in the box, I know I'm, I'm, I, I, it's time for us to bless the food. But don't you wish that you could hear somebody, you know, you, you wish that somebody could hear the sawing of a saw in you? the pounding of a nail in you, the construction of God in you. Don't you wish that somebody could hear, man, doesn't people understand what, where I'm at and what I'm dealing with? You always, always feel, always feels like these are isolated situations. But oh, oh, look at you. First time in the house. My God, here he comes. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord for Charles. He's sowing into Revelation. <laughs> oh, my. I love that. You're a keeper, man. Glory to God. So I, a lot of times we, we, we wish that these things could happen. How about Exodus chapter 14, verses 19 through 22 and verse 27? We know what takes place. God is leading Moses to lead Israel out of Egypt. By the time they got to the Red Sea, it's pitch dark. But yet a pillar of fire separates the Egyptian army from the Israeli people. But you have to remember, an entire nation was brought across the Red Sea at, 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 when it was pitch dark. I got a feeling something's up. I'm going to show you something here in just a minute. But I got a feeling something's up. But by verse 27, he's standing on the other side and the sun's coming up. But you got to remember, when the sun's going down to a Jew, it's the beginning of a new day. And here's this nation coming across an obstacle that in the natural they couldn't get across. And the entire nation ended up on the other side as the sun was coming up or God was just pronouncing judgment on the Egyptians. You know, this day is over with. You're never going to see these people again. I'm going to swallow them up in the Red Sea and this trouble will go away. So recognize what's going on in your dark nights, in your dark season. I want to share with you once again that if God's Alpha and Omega, if He's our beginning and our end, we're not called to change the future. We're called to let what is in the future change us. That is your success strategy in the spirits. 
Exodus 24, verses 9 through 18, the giving of the law happened at night. And what God gave Moses at night is still a main staple for the morality of this country. The Ten Commandments. God spoke to Moses in verse 12 and he said, come up and be with me and I will give you. I got a feeling that if you'll meet with God when you are most dead to this world, there's some strategy that God is trying to share that will be with you all the days of your life. Come on, y'all. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 12, the Lord said that he would dwell in a dark cloud. First Samuel chapter 3 says this, this young prophet had to learn the voice of God at night. First Kings chapter 18, verse 29, the prophets of Baal were dealt with by the night. When the sun went down, that's when the fire fell. Are you listening? I want to encourage you. There's some strategy here. Jude verse 7, verses 9 through 11, and also verse 13. This is the beauty of, of the kingdom. There, there, there's a one main river, but many streams make glad the cities of God. The Bible says that God's dealing with Gideon at night about a battle strategy, and the scripture says that he was afraid. I know that in this camp of spiritual giants, nobody's ever been afraid of the strategy that God's trying to introduce you to. Any real leader is shaking. Did you hear that word on the fear of the Lord this morning? I thought to myself, that's, that's a timely word right there. Because any real leader is shaking in their boots concerning the reverence that they need to make sure that they are in complete compliance and obedient to God. Are you listening? You see, he's, he's, he's worried about the strategy. And, and, and you know, you got to remember something. You, you, he's, he's facing hundreds of thousands of, of skilled uh, warriors, professional warriors, and, and God's only given him 300 to battle with. You know, the odds are looking too good. You know what I'm saying? But aren't you glad that you don't have to look at the natural? I like what the prophet said to a servant one day. He says, I'm not concerned. Lord, open his eyes and show him that there are more with us than there are against us. Are you listening? And we know what happens. We know that Gideon is concerned about the strategy. And, and, and the warfare was to be carried out at night. They were to put light, like, it, pit, like pictures of light in, in, in gourds and, and haul out gourds. And, and then they were supposed to shout in the night and, and bust those gourds open. And the light would cause confusion to come on the camp and they would turn on each other. So there's some great strategy at night. But the best strategy is this, because when you get to verse 13, this man is very concerned about what God is asking him to do and the way he's asking him to do it. And the scripture says this, it says that there we, God said, what I'll do is I'll send you around somebody that's had the same dream. And the scripture says that he went and he heard a man talking. The Bible says, I, I've had a dream and it's, it's a very, very unique situation. I don't fully understand it, but it's got to be, it's got to be the sword of Gideon. So you got to understand something that when God's giving you a dream, God will give others the same dream to confirm your dream and you won't be in it alone. Are you listening? Now that's exciting to me. The Bible talks about it in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 18. It was, it was the king that spent the entire night worrying about Daniel. But Daniel wasn't concerned. When everybody had him thrown in that lion's den, Daniel just said, hey, look, the God I serve will show up and he'll stretch out a fur-lined couch for me to spend the night on and padlock the chin of every lion. It was the king that was concerned about the well-being of Daniel. In fact, he fasted all night, and he couldn't hardly wait for the sun to come up to be able to go and check on Daniel. But just like I told you last night, God did not deliver this man from the lion's den. He delivered this man from what was in the lion's den. You and I are in this life, but we are not of this life. We have been delivered from the fallen side of what exists in this life. Oh, that would be a, that would be a great opportunity for you to shout a little bit. Yeah. But let me exhort you, whatever you do in private is what you're going to do publicly. Whatever you do in dark times is what you're going to do at noontime. What I'm trying to tell you is every portion of your walk with God is going to squeeze you to bring out of you what you really believe. So when I'm squeezed, I want to make sure that what's coming out of me is the will of God. Judge or John chapter 13, verse 30, the Bible says that, that Judas went out by night 
to do what he did. But I'm thankful tonight or today for the greatest thing that could ever happen in, 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 at night. And that was Matthew 27 and verse 45. Calvary was finished in the dark. You see, if the God of this world would have known what the Father was up to, He would have never crucified the Lord of glory. This mystery was tucked away and concealed. God played His best card at the very end, at night. In fact, there used to be a process that developed film in a certain room that's an old process of developing film. Where was it developed? In a dark room. What I'm trying to tell you, oh, what I'm trying to tell you is God's got pictures of you in the dark. What I'm trying to tell you is that there is a development of what God sees about you in dark times. Because to God, the dark is like the day. Now I'm going to close with this because what happened last year was prophetic. I mean prophetic to the bone. We had what we was referred to as the hundred year eclipse. Okay? They're saying that there's not going to be an eclipse like it for another, I don't know, 2020 or 2320, I think it is, is when it's scheduled for. But a prophecy, listen, a prophecy came out of John Kilpatrick's camp. You know, here's the thing. In March of last year, the Lord spoke to me and he said this. He said, I do my best work in the dark. And I went, okay. But that's all he said to me. And then all of a sudden, when this prophecy came out in October at the end of last year, this prophecy came out and it said this, that America was coming into an entire eclipse or coming into a dark time. My spirit jumped because I begin to realize that no matter how it might, how dark it might get to men with God, the darkness is just like the day. I begin to realize that if a nation was coming into a dark season, the church was coming into a bright season. I be, oh, come on. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you prophetically, we've got to start paying attention to a complete side of us that we have not given a whole lot of attention to. And I'm not saying, that, please don't go crazy on me here. And Because and, if you have, you have some kind of stupid dream, I'll give you some kind of stupid interpretation. All right? <laughs> I like what my pastor says. My pastor says this. He says, you know, God doesn't talk to me as much as he talks to other people. Other people are, God's always talking to them. And, and, and then he says, because that doesn't really bother me. He says, because God doesn't lie to me as much as he lies to other people. You know what I'm saying? There's these people that are always got this running conversation with God. God's always changing his mind from week to week. He says, the Lord, Lord doesn't lie to me as much as he loves the other, lies to other people. God doesn't talk to me a whole lot. But when he talks to me, I, I, I hear it. it. It thunders in my spirit. It just rings in my spirit. This is what I want you to pay attention to. I don't want you to pay attention to your imagination that processes stuff through the course of your night's sleep and, you know, all the different things that are, that you know, women, they haven't got their 30,000 words out yet. So they, they talk in their sleep, you know. That's not what I'm talking about. You know when you've had a God dream. Okay? You know when you've heard a word from the Lord. This is what I want you to pay attention to. Write these things down. And when God begins to start a motion in you, recognize that it's God giving you an opportunity to be part of the process before you see the product. Amen? We're in a time, y'all. I wish I had a little more time with you. But I, I did take uh, eight minutes longer than I told you that I would. But I want to I wanna pray for you. And uh, I'm believing that. I, I know what the Lord said to me on the way over here. The Lord said, son, he said, this church is coming into a season where people are coming to it that are going to be able to hear me different. They're going to be able to understand me different. And they're going to be able to operate with me different. Okay. So recognize who you are and what God has called this church to do through you. Okay? Pay attention. Pay attention. Because uh, he's alive and well at three in the morning. Father, 
I thank you. Now, you know, here's the thing. I told you last night that Mary carried Jesus twice in her womb. Luke chapter 1, verse 26, she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2, when she was in the upper room and that same Holy Ghost came upon her, and all of a sudden it was instant identification with where Christ dwelled in her at one time. I'm telling you, friends, there's stuff in you that has not come out of you, and it's been in you for a long, long time. A long, long time. And this is what I'm going to pray over right now. Father, I, you know, I kept hearing it when she was moving through that song, ancient gates and ancient yes. doors. I kept hearing it in my spirit. Woo, where is she? Kids. She's the only kids. Don't you know? Hallelujah. Can, we got, do we got, we got, I like to pull that song up real quick. Can you go get her real quick? Amen. Uh, you know, because I, I got a feeling that in, in, the, in, in the lives of people, this is the way it feels a lot of times. We kind of feel like these are ancient gates and ancient doors. God spoke to us so, so, so long ago, but yet there's there, there are distant memory in us. You know, they're, they're just kind of just lying there in, in wait for somebody to come along and, and, and breathe on them. I, I got a feeling that the wind of God is coming upon the bones of, of, of Ezekiel's vision. I, I've got a feeling that what is happening is, is, is God is, is, is coming after these things that we've got still tucked away in us that we know are major events I've had, so, I've had the Lord speak to me. I, I, in fact, I didn't even tell my wife what the, what the Lord said to me one time. And a good friend of mine, this is like months later, this is like eight months later, walked up to me in the middle of praise and worship and whispered in my ear the very thing that God said. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right? I'm not talking about God blessing my desires and my wants. I'm talking about God planting something in me for His purpose and for His glory, for my life to comply to, to bring forth... A manifestation. Sissy, can you bang out that song for us, those ancient doors and ancient gates? Hallelujah. And as she begins to sing this song, I'm going to ask you to get on your feet, if you would. I'm going to ask you to get on your feet. And I'm going to ask you to ask the Lord for these things that God has spoken deep down on the inside of you to begin to surface. To begin to surface. Why don't you just lift your hands to the Lord right now? Worship Him a little bit. Just worship him a little bit. If we need music, we, 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 we're, we're in dire straits. You know, Father, I thank you for what you've dropped in your people's spirits. Lord, there are things, Father God, that you have said to your people. And Lord, I believe with all my heart that this communion that you're drawing us into, that's always been there. It's always been there. But Father God, let us own the night from this moment forward. And let us become pinpoint in our accuracy. In the name of Jesus, I declare the manifestation of the greatest day of the saints. This is the year of the saint. And this is an hour that God has, has destined the church to, to arrive at. This is a time where God's people, God's militia, God's army is now in motion. I call them hitmen, stealth assassins. Come on, are you listening? I mean, the mafia would say it this way. If, it, if, if, if that person that just got whacked, got whacked by, you know, a, 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 you know, a family member, they would have never seen it. They would have never heard it coming. But they knew when the cops showed up because they made too much noise. Are you listening? Father, in the name of Jesus, there's greatness in you people. 
Draw it out. Draw it out. Draw it out. Thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church. To know more about us, go to identitychurch.net, where you'll find resources such as a calendar, media, and upcoming events. You may also download an app for your mobile device from the Apple App Store or Google Play. Then from your mobile device, you can hear our messages, read from the Bible, take notes, connect with us on the social media, and even pay your tithe. Again, thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church.